Hello, this is Nick of Time. In this session, we'll talk about older concepts of time and older concepts in physics which uh, led up to the special theory of relativity. This will give us a better idea about the special theory of relativity and about how some of its flaws developed. Of course, one of the main figures of this era was Isaac Newton. Now Newton's idea of time was absolute time, where absolute time exists independent of any observer, and absolute time progresses at a consistent pace throughout the universe. Now while um, Newton believed in absolute time, and by the way, in absolute space, he was also a proponent of the relativity principle for mechanics. Uh, and it was limited to mechanics and was uh, not extended to, say, the propagation of light at this time. Uh, so this means that he thought this, the laws of mechanics were the same for all inertial frames. As far as mechanics goes, there was no special, unique, preferred frame. All inertial frames were indistinguishable. Now this principle actually uh, predated Newton. It was developed by Galileo uh, in a, a generation or two before uh, Newton became prominent. Now this slide may seem overwhelming, but I'm just going to make uh, two simple points. In the 1800s, it was a very dynamic and excellent era of physics. Here I've listed 32 of the key names of that era. All of these people came up with new ideas and there were great debates about which ideas were correct. Some of the ideas were complementary, some were in opposition to each other and that inspired experiments to see which idea was the correct one and the results of those experiments in turn inspired new theories and new concepts. Um, secondly, all of the ideas of uh, special relativity uh, came up in this 1800s period. Uh, for example, the first name Jean Laurent d'Alembert uh, he was the only one to uh, uh, work prior to 1800. Uh, around 1754 he came up with the concept of time as a fourth dimension. Uh, and when you have James Clerk Maxwell whose equations uh, inspired the idea of extending the relativity principle from uh, mechanics to cover uh, light propagation as well, etc. Uh, we have Lorentz and Fitzgerald who came up with the concepts of uh, clock retardation or clock slowing and then length contraction. Uh, we have Michelson and Morley whose experiment suggested the idea of the constant speed of light. And we have Poincaré and Lorentz again who came up with their theory of relativity. So we'll go on to talk about some of the uh, key aspects of ether theories. Okay, we're going to look at two key ideas that came out of uh, ether theories of the late 19th century. An ether theory says that light and electromagnetic waves move through an ether as the medium of propagation. Just like uh, sound needs a medium such as air or water to, to be able to move, um, so uh, the postulate was that light and EM need a medium, and they called that the ether. Sound does not move through a vacuum, uh, but light moves, so it's postulated that the ether fills the vacuum. There were many ether theories and I'm not going to really go into them. I'm going to concentrate on two key aspects, namely um, uh, 
how ether theories extended the relativity principle, Galileo's relativity principle, uh, and the constant speed of light. So Lorentz ether theory began by explaining light phenomena, and it did, did a very good job, and it said that the speed of light is the same in all directions in the ether rest frame and only in the ether rest frame. So the ether rest frame was the medium and it's a single special preferred frame. However, uh, in the 1800s, no experiment could detect the ether frame. Uh, the Michelson-Morley experiment using interferometers is the most famous and the one that had the greatest impact, and it could not find uh, any appreciable motion by the Earth moving through the ether. Couple that with Maxwell's equations, which can't contain the speed of light, it seemed that seemed to imply that light and electromagnetic waves move at the same speed with respect to all inertial observers at all inertial frames in all directions. This, in turn, extended the relativity principle uh, from mechanics to the physics of light and electromagnetism. So, uh, Lorentz ether theory had to uh, get, be modified to account for this. Uh, the speed of light seemed to be the same in all directions, in all frames. So Lorentz and Fitzgerald came up with two ad hoc effects to do that reconciliation. Uh, first, the velocity, and let's call it the absolute velocity with respect to the ether rest frame, causes clocks to physically slow. And also, uh, the absolute velocity with respect to the unique ether rest frame caused objects to contract in the direction of their motion with respect to the ether frame. So that allowed one to still say that the only frame where light actually moved at the same speed in all directions was the ether frame, but that it would be observed to be the same in all directions in all inner frames. So that reconciled experimental results with Lorentz ether theory. Now, what I call here are the LTs, the Lorentz transformations. There are two very different Lorentz transformations. They look identical, but they're quite different. In Lorentz ether theory, the Lorentz transformations use velocity as absolute velocity, namely velocity with respect to the unique ether rest frame. In special relativity, uh, the velocity is relative velocity between any two observers. Also, uh, in the Lorentz ether Lorentz transformations, the inverse set of transformations is the true inverse. Uh, whereas in special relativity, the inverse transformation of the Lorentz transformations uh, it's just a mirror image. So those are key differences. Okay, now that we have uh, it simulate the spe speed of light is the same for all inertial frames, it seems like we have extended the relativity principle of mechanics to laws of physics for uh, light and electromagnetism. Now how did Lorentz think about this? Well he had came up with the concept of local time uh, in non-ether frames. 
and he said that uh, that local time must be defined as transforming according to this component of the Lorentz transformations. Further, Lorentz called time in the ether frame real time, like an absolute time, and time in other frames as apparent time, like observed, just observed time. Quite different than special relativity. So, we have to keep in mind, when we move on to special relativity, these key driving concepts and the differences between how they're dealt with by Lorentz ether theory and by special relativity. We have the concept of constant speed of light, uh, which were uh, given to us by uh, the Michelson-Morley experiment and Maxwell's equations, and that in turn extended the relativity principle to light and electromagnetism in all frames. So all frames, all inertial frames, are indistinguishable. Now special relativity goes on to say that all inertial frames are equal. However, in Lorentz ether theory, they're not equal because the physical model underlying the observation says, still says, that there's one frame and one frame only namely the ether rest frame, where the speed of light is the same in all directions. So we'll go on next time to talk about um, the relativity principle and its limitations, and then on to another discussion of simultaneity, and finally we'll show how that all ties into special relativity. So thank you very much.